Welcome to PPL Week 2. Today we're battling against Jay Ricky and his team, the Gigaton Hammers. Jay Ricky has a pretty cool team consisting of the following Meow Scarada, Iron Treads, Keldeo, Porygon Z, Yuxi, Kumfei, Sinister, Rotom Heat, Hisuian Quillfish, and Hairy Armor. My game plan going into this game was to just get Palafin in to dish out some serious damage to his team and weaken the resists on the team such as Keldeo and Meow Scarada so that Jet Punch could finish them off. The team that I decided to bring to this game is as follows. The Heroic Palafin, of course, the main weapon we'll be using against his team, with the choice span making Jet Punch even more powerful. Sir Corviknight the Great had to come as it's a great check to the likes of Meow Scarada, Hairy Armor, and non-Supercell Slam Iron Treads. Flordris is my designated special wall, putting a stop to the likes of Keldeo and Rotom Heat, and it is also the terror type of fire just in case. The Goat Iron Moth is my special attacker with a choice scarf to try and catch his Meow Scarada off guard, as well as dishing out some nice special damage as well. The Hysterical Mighty Enna is my designated Sinister and Yuxi Stopper, with the clear amulet to stop Sinister's Strength Sap, weakening our attack power. Also to try and force them to terror the Sinister so that Palafin can deal with it better. Finally, the Sandy Palo Sand is here to get rocks up and burn Pokemon with Scorching Sands. That's pretty much all he's doing. That's the squad. Let me know in the comments who you think is going to win. Go subscribe to all the PPL coaches as well. You'll find the links in the description down below. And without further ado, I present to you all week two of the PPL. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponents. So they lead off with Chai Wan, the Yuxi, as I led off with my... Palafin, I figured Palafin was a good lead because um, even if they led with Rotom Heat or the Meow Scarada, I can just switch into the Corviknight or the Floor just regardless. Um, so as long as I can get my hero mode done up. So um, I want to go for a flip turn right off the bat. I think that's going to be really useful. Um, I'm just wondering what this Yuxi is going to do. Could he, he wouldn't be Choice Scarf Yuxi or like that, would he? Uh, probably going to set up the Stealth Rocks, if anything. So I'm going to go for a flip turn here. Flip turn comes through. We do outspeed, so they're not Scarf randomly. Um, so we get a little bit of chip on the Yuxi, which is great. Going for the flip turn is always useful there. Um, they probably go for a Stealth Rocks or a Thunder Wave or Screens. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is, if they go for a Stealth Rocks, I'd like to get my Palosand in. Palosand could be really good here. We can get our own Stealth Rocks up then as well, but Corviknight on the other hand can defog away their Stealth Rocks. I think Corviknight's a good good one, because um, if they go for a U-turn, we're going to get some Rocky Helmet chip on them anyway. So we'll bring Corviknight in, good old Noctis, exert some pressure. And then they go for a Calm Mind. Ooh, the setting up straight away. Interesting. So that is very interesting. So if they're a Calm Mind Uxie, what are they going to do here? That's the real question. What are they going to do? So I think the best way to go about this is to go for a U-turn into Mighty Enna. So they go for a Thunderbolt at plus one, which is going to sting. Is only going to do half, though, luckily, as we go for a U-turn, which is going to do a little bit of damage. So... That's a scary Yuxi right there with Calm Mind up. So what's the best option for this? Is it going to be the uh, the uh, uh, the Mighty Enna or Mighty Enna probably is for the best. I think if Mighty Enna is doing anything, this game is this, right? So let's go Mighty Enna. I wanted to keep Mighty Enna for that uh, Sinister. That's why I've got a clear amulet on it so that it can't strength. Well, it can strength up us, but it can't lower our attack. So we're getting that endless struggle. Um, but I, I think Mighty Enna might have to deal with this thing instead. I don't think Nick can Terror the Yuxi, but I'm going to go for a Crunch regardless. So we go for a Crunch. It should do a nice little bit of chip. Yeah, it's a two shot from there. Um, as they go for a Thunderbolt, probably their best move to hit our Mighty Enna with. It's not going to do too much damage, and luckily it doesn't paralyze us, which is great. As uh, the next turn, I'm definitely going to go for another Crunch. I don't see any reason not to, um, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go for a Crunch now. They do withdraw the Yuxi. They don't want it to go down just yet, and that means we get some chip damage on something. They're going to go into Hyrin, which is going to be the Keldeo to get Justified Boost. Interesting. So Crunch comes through, and that's going to give them a Justified Boost. Um, so if they have physical attacks, then we're kind of owned. Unless they're bluffing the physical attack, trying to bait in my um, Corviknight. I, I guess I go Florges here, right? I think I always go Florges here. So we withdraw our Mighty Enna. We are going to go into Florges. Florges seems like the safest play here against this Keldeo. They probably go for a flip turn anyway. But I had to switch out regardless. Hydro Pump? That's fine. We can eat that. Yeah, we eat that like it's nothing. So that's great. So what I'm going to do here is... Because I could terror this thing, but I'm not going to terror fire in front of a Keldeo. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go for a Wish. So they withdraw. What are they going to go into? The Iron Treads? Iron Treads would make sense. Uh, Hanny comes in. Is that the Iron Treads? It is the Iron Treads. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. So 
Uh, we go for a wish. Now, I could stay in and Terra Fire here. They may go for an Earthquake predicting that, so I think the best thing to do is to go into Corviknight. So yeah, I don't want to I don't want to Terra just yet, especially when they could go for an Earthquake to try and like, predict the Terra, because both my Terras, I think I've got Terra Steel, Terra Fire on this thing. So we withdraw, and we're going to pass the wish on to our Corviknight. Again, I don't want to stay in and take an Iron Head. They, they might go for a Vault Switch or a Stealth Rocks. If they do, at least we're going to get our Wish Recovery back, which is going to be great. So they go for a Stealth Rocks, which is fine. And this does give them a free switch into the Rotom Heat, which is unfortunate, because we're going to have to go for a Defog here. Um, unless we don't go for Defog for now, and we go for a U-turn to keep on momentum. Now I'm going to go for a Defog. I'm going to get rid of those Stealth Rocks real quick. So they withdraw. Yep, they're going to go into Rotom Heat more than likely. If I had to guess, Chai won. That's not the Rotom Heat. That's the Uxie. So Yuxi comes back in. We go for a Defog. Get rid of those Stealth Rocks, which is going to be great. Lowers their evasiveness. And now we... Um, they're, they're probably going for another Calm Mind here. Either way, I think we're probably all right going for a U-turn. I'm confident I can take a Thunderbolt from this thing when it's not got a boost, especially. So I'm going to go for a U-turn here. They go for an Encore. Ah, okay. Encore is a good play. Encore is a very good play. So we go for another Defog, which is going to lower their evasiveness, sure, but was it worth it? <laughs> now, I'm going to withdraw my Corviknight. I'm going to go into my Tiena. I think my Tiena can take a Thunderbolt if they go for a Thunderbolt. We can definitely take two, I think. And they do go for a Thunderbolt. We should be able to take two of those, right? Yeah, we take two. That's fine. As long as they don't paralyze us, we're all right. So we're going to get some nice crunch damage off once again. However, this time... I'm leaning towards doing something else. I'm leaning towards going for a super fang or a play rough instead. They might expect us to over predict there. We might over predict here. Let's go straight for a crunch. I don't see any reason not to because we could have play rough. They know this. We could go for the play rough predicting the Keldeo to switch in. So I'm going to go for the safe crunch just because I, I have a feeling they're going to go for the Keldeo. They're not going to go for a Keldeo switch here. So they do withdraw. Are they going to go into the Keldeo again? I mean, either way, it's chip damage at the end of the day. Geo. 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 Meow Scarada, that's fine. Some chip damage on the mouse. Meow Scarada can't be harmful. Just break potential Sash after all, which they could be. Lowers the defense as well, which is really nice. So we could have... Uh, if mm. I think the best, safest option here is to go into Corviknight once again. I don't think this Meow Scarada can really touch Corviknight. They could knock off to get rid of the Rocky Helmet. But that'll give them some Rocky Helmet chip at the same time. And then we can just U-turn on them. So we'll go Corviknight now. Exert some pressure, lowering their PP a bit more. They go for a knockoff to get rid of our uh, Rocky Helmet, which is fine. I don't mind that too much because we get the Rocky Helmet chip anyway. And now we get a free U-turn off on whatever we want. So I'm going to go for the U-turn now. Let's see what they do. They withdraw. Okay, so we get some momentum, which is great. What are they going to go into? Kazuha. Kazuha. That's the Rotom Heat. So Rotom Heat comes in. We go for a U-turn. Bit of chip. We're just kind of chipping away at the team at the moment, which is great. And why this is so great is because, obviously, Palafin is a thing. So, the Rotom can't Terror, I don't believe. So, I think we're pretty safe going into good old Palafin here. So, I'm going to go into Palafin. Like so. We'll go into All Might. Nice and shiny in its hero form. Looking amazing. I, I never really got to use Palafin during Scarlet and Violet's early days. Because I always played by Smogon. And it, they banned it before I could use it. So... I'm pretty happy to be able to use it now. So let's go for a jet punch. There's no reason not to, right? They withdraw. They have to withdraw there. What are they going to take a jet punch, though? Hyrin. Who's Hyrin? Keldia. That's good. That's a good play, because it's going to definitely take the jet punch, but it doesn't take it super well. And now we just simply switch out again. Um, if we assume... They probably don't go for a Hydra. They probably go for a Secret Sword, if anything. So I kind of want to go... I kind of want to make a really ballsy play. And go into Palosand. I have a feeling they're Specs Keldeo. I haven't seen another item, I don't think. The the the, the right play no, because even if they go for a hydro pump, it takes out Florgis. Part of me wants to just go straight for another jet punch. Rather than take unnecessary damage. Or we can just sack my Tiena. It's also an option. Um I think they're going to go for a Secret Sword, and that's why I think Florgis is still a good switch. Because even if we lose Florgis, Florgis' main role is just stopping this thing. 
So it's not that bad, to be fair. So they go for a flip turn, which is going to give a bit of chip damage to us. But then they um, activate our Citrus Berry, which is going to recover our health back. So we're actually better off than we were from switching in Florges. So they go for a flip turn. What are they going to go into, though? Probably the Iron Treads, if I had to guess. Chai Wan, that's the um, Uxie, right? Yeah, Uxie comes in. Good play. That's a very good play. So um, they're going to get the leftovers recovery and all that. We do have a way of getting a free switch in here, so I'm going to go for a baton pass. I'm not baton passing any stats, so it's perfectly legal, or a substitute for that matter. So they go for a calm mind. They're trying to set up all over us. Um, we get a free switch into Mighty Enna here, which is great. Mighty Enna can put some pressure on this Uxie um, by going for a crunch, but that is literally all it can do. Go for one crunch, and that's it. So it's whether they want to take that crunch or not. And I'm hoping, I'm really hoping we don't get a crit. So I'm going to go Mighty Enna. Like, I know I know, crit would be really beneficial to me, but I, I, I despise when there's hacks in, like, important games, like league games and stuff. Not so much in, like, a casual 6v6 against a random or online, but, you know, when it's against someone I, I, I know and speak to, I don't like hacks. So let's go for... Let's go for a crunch. Crunch comes through. It should do a nice bit of damage. There we go. They go for a Thunderbolt and take out Mighty Enna. So they claim their first victory against us, which is going to be Mighty Enna going down. It did all right. It put the pressure on the Uxie. It's got some chip damage on the rest of the team a little bit for us. Um, now it's a matter of what do we do against this Uxie now? So our next best physical attacker is going to have to be the Palavin. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to flip turn first, choice ban flip turn, and go into floor just then I'm going to baton pass into Palavin again and, and jet punch. So... That's the plan. Let's go into Palafin now. Because I'm not confident Jet Punch will KO the Uxie from here. Because they're definitely physically defensive. They're definitely physically defensive. Um, or at least with some investment. So we go for a flip turn. That's going to do... Oh, Jet Punch would have KO'd. Ah. I just assume based on the Mighty Ender damage. But then again, Mighty Ender doesn't have base 160 attack. So, <laughs> something to remember. Uh, Floor, just you can come in now though because they're probably going to go for a Thunderbolt, which we can definitely take. We can take, we can take a Psychic as well, and um, we can take a Psy Shock as well. Um, so they go for a T Bolt, which is going to do a little bit of chip, nothing, nothing too drastic. And then we simply Baton Pass again into Palafin, and we just start firing off Jet Punches. And the idea behind this uh, whole thing was just to weaken their team. So I'm going to go for a Baton Pass now. They go for a Stored Power after one Calm Mind, and that's not going to do much damage, unfortunately, for them. As we simply Baton Pass now. And go into Palafin once again and just fire off Jet Punches. Pretty much. That's all we need to do. So let's go into Palafin now. There we go. All Might comes in. Like so. And uh, like I said, we just go for a Jet Punch. It, the best switch is probably going to be the Sinister, if anything. But they might just let Yuxi go down here. So I'm going to go for a Jet Punch now. They may expect us to overpredict as well and go for a Sinister Switch uh, Ice Punch. Jet Punch comes through, and that's going to KO the Uxie, which is great. So we got a KO with the Uxie, with the Palafin, which is great. Yunche comes in, which is going to be the Sinister. It's nice and shiny as well, got to love it. So um, we're going to have to switch out here. They're probably going to be a Calm Minding set, um, in which case I think our best bet is going to... No. They're a Calm Mind set. Our best bet is Brave Birds from Corviknight. Right now it is. Right now it is. So we withdraw our Jet, uh, jet Punch. We withdraw our Jet Punch.exe. And we're going to go into Corviknight to take a hit. If, if they go for a Calm Mind, that's ideal. Um, they do go for a Calm Mind, so that's great. So we're kind of forcing them to Terror at this point, which is going to be great for us. If, if we can get them to Terror, then that would be fantastic. Um, so I'm going to go for a Brave Bird now just to get the damage off. Um, we do have pressure, so they can Strength Sap us successfully. Maybe I shouldn't have brought pressure. But they go for another Calm Mind. We go for a Brave Bird. This should do a lot of damage still. It does half, which is fantastic. So we're damaged by the recoil and all that. But they have got a Berry, which is going to be the Citrus Berry, I'm guessing. So that's great. So do they Terror? Because if they Terror, we can get them with Palafin. Or do they strength sap right now? Do they strength sap? I'm just going to hit another uh, Brave Bird. They do go for a strength sap, which is fine. Um, it lowers our attack and does heal them pretty much back to full, I think. Yeah, back to full. 100%. Uh, we go for another Brave Bird. And then that's going to do even less damage this turn. So um, we do need to do something about this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... I don't want it to get too out of control. 
I really don't want it to get out of control. Um, let's go for a roost first and foremost, just to get our Corviknight back up. They go for another strength sap. It's fine. They go for a strength sap. It's fine. They're going to continue to go for a strength sap. I'm absolutely okay with that. So, um, it lowers our attack, heals them back up to pretty much full, or exactly full. We get a roost off, which is great. And now, I feel like our best option. I'm going to go for a U-turn. They go for another Calm Mind, as you would expect. So, they're at plus three now. They're at plus three now. And we go for a U-turn to get a little bit of chip. Just a little bit of chip. Just a tiny little bit of chip. So, what do we do against this Sinister? Because I kept the Mighty Inner around. I wanted to keep the Mighty Inner around for this reason. Because the Clear Amulet stopped it from getting its um, health sapped, uh, attack sapped. And we'd be golden. But, unfortunately, that's not how this has worked out. So, I'm, I'm leaning towards... Either the Palo Sans... No. We have to weaken it a little bit. Let's go into Florges and we'll Terrify her. We'll Terrify her Terror Blast. Because they're not going to get much health back from Florges with Strength Sap. So we Terrify her and we Terror Blast. Yes. And if Florges goes down, I'm not too worried. So we Terrify her Terror Blast right now. Like so. There it is. The Terrifier on the floor just is fine. And then we go for a Terror Blast. They go for a Shadow Ball. We should take a plus three one. We don't. That's a real shame. I was hoping we would take that. But obviously we don't. So, crap. Um, do, we do, do we try and KO this thing with Palafin? Or don't we? Do we have to try and weaken it first? Right, what are you doing for us? I think I think with Palafin we can win the game. I really do. So I'm going to have to go into the Moth. We're going to go into Mothra.exe and we're going to have to spam Fiery Dance. This might force them to Terra, in which case we'll be able to Jet Punch it in the face. Let's go for a Fiery Dance. I'm choice Scarf for um, taking out the Meow Skirada. And also, if there were booster energy iron, uh, iron treads, we could outspeed them still. That does no damage because of the car mines, but it could, yeah, but boost our special attack, which is the main key point. They go for a shadow ball. We might live this because we have a meaty special defense. We do live, which is great. So we go for another fiery dance. Fiery dance comes through. Does way more damage this time. They go for another shadow ball. That's fine. This sinister is really getting on my grinding my gears though. So here's the thing, right? They, this is their Terra Captain. Do we go Palafin? And this is the thing. Are they going to Terra here to take the hit, the Ice Punch? Or are they going to expect us to predict the Terra? The Terra is very obvious. So is the best thing to do go for the Ice Punch? It's a 50-50 chance. It's a 50-50 chance. Are I going to Terra or they're not? I, I think, I think, uh, let's think, let's think, let's think. I've just lost two of my mons to the Sinistra. I'm flustered. I'm going to go straight for the super effective attack. Or am I going to over predict? Um, so you know what? Screw it. We'll go simple. Let's go for an ice punch. Ice punch comes through. There we go. Takes out the Sinistra. Thank you very much. It was a 50-50 chance whether they were going to terror or not. It was 50-50 because... It, it really depends on what they think my mindset is right now. And I am flustered. I am flustered. I will say I need to calm down. Zen mode. Kazuha comes in. That's the Rotom Heat. So they are definitely doing something here. Let, all right, right. We're going to have to bring out the Palisand. We just have to go into Palisand here. Um, again, I need to I need to think about what to do against this Rotom. So they know we're, they've got to know we're banded by the flip turn damage earlier. So we go Palisand now. They go for an overheat, which is going to, it's going to two-shot us... Definitely, but they lower the special attack, so it's not going to two-shot us now, which is good. We do have a Citrus Berry as well, which is great. Um, Let's go. I want to get the Stealth Rocks up. Late game, late game Rocks could help here. So I'm going to go for a Stealth Rocks first and foremost. They go for a Light Screen. That's interesting. So are they Jewel Screens? Probably. So we go for a Stealth Rock here. If they're dual screens and they get the reflect up now, that's kind of busted. Um, 
I know I've just got Stealth Rocks up, but if they're screens, I need to get rid of those screens. It's the only way we can win with Palafin. I'm going to have to make the ballsy play of going into Corviknight here. They withdraw. They haven't got Reflect, which is interesting. They're just Light Screening. And they're going to go into Hyrin, which is going to be... What was that again? The Keldeo. Get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is nice. We ended up switching out into Corviknight. Corviknight's not a bad switch here. So we bring Corviknight in. And we can simply go for a uh, U-turn here or a Brave Bird. Um, I'm leaning towards a Brave Bird. They probably go Iron Treads actually, right? What do I do? What's the best scenario here? I'm going to go for a U-turn. They actually go for a Flip Turn themselves. Pro like I said, probably going into the Iron Treads. I figured, you know what? The, I, there's no point going for a Brave Bird because if they Hydro Pump me and I, I don't want to lose my Corviknights just yet when they've got me Grada right there. They go into Kazuha now, which is of course the Rotom. We go for a U-turn. And now we simply go into our Palafin once again. We go into Palafin once again. And we get a free attack. So we, get, we go Palafin, we get a free attack. I'm pretty confident Rotom's not their Terra Captain. Yeah, we lose nothing from going for a Jet, jet Punch here. There's literally no reason not to. Because they have to switch out if they want to preserve their Rotom. And they go into Hanny, which is going to be the, Miyazuki, uh, the Iron Tread, sorry. Iron Treads is fine. If they're Rocky Helmet, that's, an, that's a good good play because it means they're going to get some chip damage on us. But Jet Punch is going to KO here. As down goes the Iron Treads, which is fantastic. So, Palafin's putting in God's work right now. Hyrene comes in. That's the uh, Miascarada, right? No, it's Keldeo. I keep forgetting the names. Um, right, so the Keldeo is weakened. I'm not confident Jet Punch will KO here. I'm pretty confident they'll go for a Secret Sword, though. And I'm also kind of confident the choice. But then again, they might go for a flip turn. Realistically, what can they actually do to my uh, Palafin? Yeah, we, we don't care with a Jet Punch, but they go for a Surf. That's like, I was going to say Hydro Pump or Surf would have been the best option. They go for high Surf, though. It doesn't even do half. The Light Screen wears off. We just have to sit here and spam Jet Punch at this point. Jet Punch comes through. That Keldeo is history, which is fantastic. So now that that's history, Geo comes in. That's the Meow. Yeah, Meow Scrider comes in. It's going to take some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great. Uh, not confident we'll take them out in one hit, so I'm going to go into Corviknight straight up. There is no real reason not to go into Corviknight here. They cannot touch it. So we withdraw our Palafin. I don't want to risk it with the Jet Punch, not KOing, like it didn't with the Keldeo. Um, so I'm going to go into Corviknight, get the pressure on, which is fine. They go for a U-turn, which is also fine, and they go into the Rotom Heat, in which case we go into Palasan. So the Rotom Heat is a problem, but if we can just sack off Palasan to it, then we're actually all right. So there's the Rotom Heat coming in, which is great. Get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is also great. Um, it does have an, a berry, which is interesting. They're going to have a Citrus Berry. Is it Citrus Berry or is it? Yeah, Citrus Berry. Now, do they go for an Overheat? They probably go for an Overheat. Let's go into Palo San just in case they Volt Switch, but they definitely go for an Overheat and I don't want Corviknight to go down just yet. I do need Corviknight to KO the Meow Scarada. So at least with Palo San coming out, we block a Volt Switch, which stops the momentum if they wanted to Volt Switch into Meow Scarada on us. Um, so they go for an Overheat again, which isn't going to KO us, but it does nearly KO us. They get a Special Attack drop. And now I could... I could preserve, but they could have Will-O-Wisp. They might predict us to go into Palafin to preserve the Palo Sand. Um, so I'm going to go for a Shore Up anyway, just in case. They go for another Overheat, though. That is going to take us out. But now... We get a free switch into the Palo San, uh, the Palafin. So, like I said, I could have gone into Palafin then to take the overheat, but if they'd have switched on moves and got a crit or something, then we'd have been boned. So let's go into Palafin now and just fire off a jet punch. So All Might comes in, like so. There we go. And we simply go for a jet punch. That's all we need to do. Jet punch comes through, and that is a dead Rotom, I'm afraid. Because Palafin is just too strong. <laughs> <laughs> Palafin is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'm pretty confident that after Stealth Rocks, Jet Punch will KO the Meow Scarada. But I'm not 100% confident. I'm not 100% confident, I will be honest. Um, so, even though I'm not 100% confident that will KO, even though it probably will KO, and I know there's someone screaming at the telly going, Joe Jet Punch is going to KO from there! Actually, I think it does KO. Let's go for a Jet Punch. Yeah, Jet Punch comes through. That's going to KO, right? Yeah. So, Meow Scarada goes down. I listened to your screams at the TV. I listened to them. 
and it worked out. GG. GG, J. Ricky. That's, that's, that was a great game. That was a long game as well. Wow. Well, that was a wild game. That 50-50 with Sinistro and whether it was going to terror or not really did make the game. I think both sides played really well this game, and I'm just glad I finally got a W under my belt this week. Thank you all for watching, and with that being said, I'll catch you all in a bit.